Hey there guys, it's Lee here and welcome to Iron Mind Blocks. In today's video I'll be sharing everything we currently know about the Radeon 7. So this is AMD's latest graphics card release and it is a 7 nanometer processor. So what that means is that we should be seeing excellent performance, low power consumption and really great results when using this card for mining. So I've got a couple of slides that I'm going to go through in this video, sharing with you all of the relevant information. At the end, we've got some super useful information and I can share with you the current Ethereum hash rate when mining with this card. So I'm going to share all the data with you. So let's jump into it. The Radeon 7 is AMD's flagship GPU and it is actually a world first because it incorporates a seven nanometer processor. So this is the world's first time for a GPU. The processor, just to look at from the screenshot, you can see it looks cool just in itself, but it goes above and beyond that because it has 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. This GPU also supports one terabytes of memory bandwidth, which is a staggering amount of memory and it goes above and beyond pretty much every other GPU that's out there in the marketplace today. With the Radeon 7, it's nice to see that AMD has moved away from the traditional blower designed GPUs. Pretty much all of the stock uh, GPUs that I've seen have all been triple fan designs. So that's really gonna help with your cooling, assuming you've got a pretty good and well cooled case already. But the design looks very good. Triple fans is always gonna be a good idea. Uh, one other point that you can kind of just about see on this slide that it also has two eight pin PCI Express connectors. So this is gonna be a power hungry card. I'll come on to more details in just a moment, but you are gonna need two eight pin PCI power connectors. Taking a look at the Radeon 7 spec sheet, you can see it has 60 compute units, core boost frequency is up to 1750, peaks of up to 1800. It's most likely that we'll see with overclocking, we could probably take that up to above uh, 2000. Looking back to the spec sheet again, you can see it also has 3840 stream processors. The power supply requirements are recommended at 300 watts. Uh, according to some other stats, the official TDP rating is 295 watts. So it's quite a power hungry card. That also means that the card is gonna put out quite a bit of heat as well. So you're certainly gonna need um, a good effective case cooling solution. Taking a quick look at some information provided by Tech Power Up, just a few different angles of the graphics card. You can see um, a couple of different options on there. So obviously from the front, we can see that triple fan design, which is what we've already talked about. You can just about see the top with the twin eight pin PCI Express connectors. The rear side of the card has kind of that traditional um, aluminium black plate like we've seen before. There's also some other screenshots uh, of the PCB and the processor die as well. I'll link that into the description if you guys are interested in seeing more close up pictures. So talking about the price of these graphics cards, I read reports that the retail is going to be 699 in the United States and closer to 750 euros uh, within European regions. Uh, for me in the UK, I've just checked out one of my favorite retailers, which is ebuyer.com. And the cheapest versions are the Sapphire and the Powercolor uh, variants, and they're coming in at 650 pounds. There's also a Gigabyte version, 680 pounds. So quite expensive graphics cards, but from the specs that we've um, already seen in terms of gaming, it looks like I would say fair value for money in comparison to the other cards that are on the market, especially when you compare them to the Nvidia offerings, uh, which are uh, currently very, very expensive. Okay, so this is the part that you've been waiting for. So this slide was sourced from the crypto mining blog. So it's a good reputable source of mining information. You can see on the image that it is the GFX 906, so that's a Radeon 7, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 60 compute units. Um, it's been recognized as a Vega class of cards. So this is also using the Claymore's dual Ethereum mine, it's version 12. So there's could be some better updates or um, optimized miners that are made specifically for this card. So that's one thing to look out for in the future. Um, but even just with the current uh, software that we have, we can see that this card is mining at around 90 mega hashes per second. So that's a huge amount of performance uh, from a graphics card. 
not many other cards go to those sort of um, uh, levels. Uh, in comparison, you're going to need three RX 570s um, to compete with that. So this looks to be a really good uh, graphics card for mining. What we can also uh, work out or distinguish uh, from this is that because the performance is so high with Ethereum, it's very likely to see that we'll get very high performance among other uh, proof of work algorithms. A lot of those are very memory intensive and uh, because of the performance of the memory on this graphics card, it's very likely that we'll see very high performance on those algorithms too. Okay, so we've already discussed the specs of this card. We know that we're looking at a retail price of around $700 or £650 in the UK. We know that the TDP is around 295 watts, and we know that the performance is around about 90 mega hashes when mining Ethereum. So if we use our site like what to mine putting all that information together, what kind of profits can this graphics card make? So I'm in the UK and my electricity here is quite expensive. So I've got it set to 15 cents per kilowatt hour. You guys in the United States, you're probably going to pay, um, you know, less than 10 cents, something like that. So the performance and profitability will most likely be higher for you guys. Um, but using those stats there, here's the results that we can see. And unfortunately for me in the UK, it's not great. So mining Ethereum, it looks like we're going to produce a revenue of around about a dollar per day. And for me, I'm going to be in not in profit. So I'm going to lose about three cents a day mining Ethereum. For you guys uh, that are in the States, you'll make a small profit. But even on that basis, um, you know, if, it, if this card is just making a dollar per day, you're going to be looking around, um, you know, six to seven hundred days just to make your money back in terms of revenues. So there's a long way to go and um, you know, in terms of profitability, I think we'll probably see maybe better results when mining other algorithms. So if you're using this card to mine Grin or Monero, I think we could probably work out some better profits there. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed watching. You've got some useful information from this video and um, overall it's been a good positive experience for you. If you did like this video, please give it a like. If you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe. I put out content like this on a regular basis and it'd be great to have you as part of our community here. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.